Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to paint this abstract contemporary floral with palette knife. We'll use acrylic paints for it and I'll show you step by step all the way through how to do it. Should be a fairly easy project. I think a good beginner palette knife project. I've got my husband Mark with me. Ahoy there, matey. <laughs> oh, is it talk like a pirate day? It is. Oh my. <laughs> okay, you're, you're in for it. Let's get welcome. started. <laughs> too much this one <laughs> shiver me timbers we're we're serious artists here so all right this is my example painting i did this on my i get questions about this all the time this is my strathmore visual journal mixed media it's important to do it on mixed media paper uh that way um it doesn't buckle too badly and uh you do all of my example paintings on these um uh, they hold up really well you don't curl too much and um Anyhow, even the palette knife did pretty well for it. Um, so the link for that is down in the description if you want to get one for yourself for practice. They're great for practice, and then you can go to canvas or board. I'm using a firm uh, gesso board today. Uh, I like to use a firm support when I do canvas or um, when I do palette knife paintings. Um, if you're using a canvas, uh, just support underneath it with like some magazines or something that fits in the space that's... Uh, under where you know the canvas might have a little give that way you'll have a lot less headaches <laughs> all right so um, to start out we're going to uh, go ahead and pop up the picture there honey I'll go over our our colors really quick with you we've got titanium white unbleached titanium cadmium orange yellow oxide cadmium yellow light but you can use medium if you don't have this one teal and uh, anthraquinone blue uh, but you can use Thalo blue green shade if you want and just add some burnt, burnt umber to it to make it a little bit darker or, or black even to make it darker. It's just a, a little bit darker shade. This is burnt umber. And then I have some uh, gloss gel medium just to make our paints go a little bit farther. And I'm going to be using a couple different palette knife sizes and possibly this one as well. And then a little bit of chalk and I'll probably be using a couple of different brushes. Um, a large, just the angle, it doesn't matter if it's angled or large flat, and then a kind of a smaller flat brush. So all the brushes are down in the description uh, in the links and the paint colors as well. So if you don't have these colors, you can use really any colors that you'd like. Uh, just pick colors that will kind of blend well together um, or look, you know, look nice together. Um, but if you pick colors that are kind of close to each other on the color scale, color wheel, like yellow, green, blue, you know that you can blend those, uh, mix them up, and they'll, they'll do well together. So, all right, first thing I'm going to do is use a little bit of chalk here, and I'm just going to kind of roughly sketch out where I want my large flower to be. It's going to be, so here's my center, just kind of an oval shape. Can you see that? Do I need to press harder? Uh, press a little bit harder. There we go. So kind of an oval shape, then this bottom petal is going to kind of do this sort of zigzag thing like this. Then there's going to be side petals that sort of do like this, up and around. Maybe another one here, another one there. Okay. Then we'll have a bunch of leaves and things up here. A bunch of random shapes and things. And then there's another flower right here. So kind of just like three triangles right there. We'll have the center of it, a stem there. We'll do a stem here, some random leaves or something over here. This is very kind of abstract. So a lot of the background will be sort of just like, what is that? Um, and then the flowers will be a little bit more, you know, distinct, but we're still gonna keep them fairly loose so don't get too caught up in the drawing part of this um, just want to have fun with it explore with our paints today do our center there I might move this one over a little bit I think it got a little too close to this one so I'm gonna move it over here grab a little bit of water and just erase that a little bit right there okay 
That way this guy's got a little bit more room over here to play with. And our center's down low again. Bring those feather petals almost to this one. So this is our main focal point petal. This one, the center is going to be kind of right on our third. So if you split your, your canvas into thirds, uh, this center part is going to be right on that third. And that, that'll take up the majority of this all the way past the halfway mark. So here's the halfway mark. We're going to go right past it and uh, up to about the quarter mark at the top here. So it's ending right about the third on this side and filling up almost this entire bottom corner of the painting. We'll do a couple of small buds or something over here and then some more leaves. And that's all I'm gonna do for our drawing portion. Lean off that chalk. And just grab a large brush, whatever you want to use. And we're going to fill in the background with multiple colors, just kind of trying to uh, keep it loose and flow from one color to another. So I'm just going to start with this mixture of my yellow and my both of my yellows, actually. My cadmium yellow light and my yellow oxide. Got a, some, what, got a question asking... Can you mix anything to make the orange? Uh, yeah, if you've got, um, well, I mean, that orange is, is fairly distinct, but if you have like a cadmium red and you mix that with a cadmium yellow, you should be able to get something similar. It won't be exactly the same, but it'll be good enough. Let's grab some of that orange. Speaking of, we'll pop in a little bit of orange up here. I'm just going to be kind of dabbing in random colors around my flower. This is where you can get kind of creative and just sort of do what seems fun. Mix some of these colors together here. We'll get some of this teal mixed with the yellow. If you don't have teal, you can mix that yourself with uh, phthalo blue and phthalo green in equal parts with a little bit of white. So you have those two colors or really phthalo blue with yellow would would also work and I'm not worried about my flower really I'm just kind of going in around it and now I'm gonna grab some of that blue and lay in some blue this one and then behind this grab some more of that yellow mix those two together right here for this corner up here and I still have the green and things on my brush so it's gonna mix with a little bit and I'm just gonna let that happen try not to I think that the um, the mistake that a lot of um, beginner painters might have trouble with and with this, something like this is that um, you don't stop your blending like you see, uh, you know, that these two colors aren't exactly um, blended well or whatever. And you, the tendency is to keep blending and blending and blending and blending. And what will happen is the entire area will just end up being a mixture of these two colors. You won't have any separation at all. So really just try to restrain yourself. Um, let some of these brush strokes happen. We can always cover up uh, these but uh, we want all this kind of interesting stuff going on in the background. So don't, uh, don't over blend. Just kind of dab in a couple of times and stop. And just keep, keep moving. Keep, keep your brush moving. Um, move along. So what happens if you only have one yellow color? What could you do? Um, yeah, yellow oxide, you can... Um, 
you can use a little bit of, well, I'm trying to think what would work best to mix that. Um, it's just a little bit kind of a browned out yellow, so you could probably use a tiny bit of like burnt umber with, uh, with the yellow to get some, it won't be exactly the same kind of golden color, but it'll be close. You could even add a little bit of red maybe um, to make it more golden. Could you sell your car to get some more money to buy more paint? <laughs> that would be my first suggestion. That's what I was first thinking. I was like, S sell your husband's car, right? Truck, right? So you can get more paint. Yeah, just do whatever you got to do. The artist and the commenter tour is not responsible for any <laughs> thing that may or may not happen if you sell your car <laughs> to buy more paint. In fact, we advise against it. <laughs> I probably would advise against that, yeah. Yeah, legal came down and said that we need to put a disclaimer in there. <laughs> oh, I mean, ahoy there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling down on the you job here. Are, you are. I'm going to mix this anthraquinone blue with the burnt umber. It'll make a gray. And I'm going to grab a little bit of white and just kind of mix those together. Isn't that a pretty color? There we go. If I want it a little bit more brown, I can grab a little bit more of that. There we go. We'll use a little bit of this under behind some of these white flowers here. I'm going to go ahead and use it in here too. So do you think there was a guy at the this paint is place? Titanium here mixed with it. What? Go ahead. There was a guy at the paint place who was in charge of, you know, mixing paints and stuff like that. And one day he accidentally burned the umber. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute. No, it's burnt umber. <laughs> I meant to do that. Yeah. I don't know. And it became a thing. <laughs> Sounds like something you would do. <laughs> so is is there a color called umber? Seriously. Uh. Is every color called umber? No, no, no. Is there a color? Is there a color? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. There's raw umber and burnt umber and. Um, I'm to so think if there's any umber not perfectly umber. cooked umber. No. <laughs> it's either sushi or burnt. Right. Going for okay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna make this yellow here. I don't know if I want it that dark on this one. So we'll give it a little bit of light color over here. Most of this is going to be covered up, but we'll see a little bit of it underneath our white paint. So we want, you know, some color under here to give a little contrast with our flowers. And get a little bit more white there. And I'm going to spray down my palette just so that it stays damp. Paints stay moist while I'm working with them. There we go. That's probably closer to the color that I want. That kind of lighter gray. really not being super careful about the outside edges. We kind of want a little bit of this color to sort of pop through when we do our colors on top. So we're not being all that careful with where these go. All right, looking good. Let's keep on going over here. I kind of stopped filling in this area.
I'd like to say ahoy to everybody who's just joining us. And we won't make you walk the plank for showing up late. That's right. <laughs> but thanks for showing up. <laughs> Spending your Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning or whatever may be in part of the world you are. Give it a thumbs up if you like what's going on. Especially for the pirate talk. <laughs> And you can subscribe to Angela's channel if you haven't already. You can join us in chat, ask questions uh, that I may or may not be paying attention to sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but down below the video in the description is a list of all the materials used tonight and links to a lot of them, brushes, paints, and uh, social media. Yes. Facebook pages, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. If you'd like to share what you're doing with us, we would love to see it. I'm just continuing to fill in the background of all these flowers. Added some teal up here to those. And we'll Kind of add a couple of gray something there. All right, that's looking good. <clears throat> I'm, gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a clean brush here and grab some of the orange. Mix that with the yellow oxide to tone it down just a little bit. We'll use that in the center of our flower. Maybe a little bit more of the yellow oxide there. Make some brown mixed with the unbleached titanium. Ooh, almost that almost was bad. What happened? I almost dropped it. You almost dropped your yeah, brush. It was like tw twirling out of my hand. Wow. Toward my sleeve. We're going to have to Which... do a slow mo <laughs> on that. <Yeah. laughs> I pulled it out just in time. Well, if you mess it up, we can always start again on some kind of a pirate themed painting. Right. <laughs> I didn't know that it was a pirate. I know, and pirate I didn't. I forgot about it today. too. But fortunately, on my work calendar, I have a very important reminder. <laughs> God forbid we forget. Talk like a pirate day. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm using this same brush here, just pressing that flat. It's got some of that brown, some of the orange in it, some of the uh, unbleached titanium all these good colors mixed up together and I'm just going to create some stems for some of these flowers here. Maybe. Mary would like to know if using plastic pellet knives will give the same effect as the metal ones. I think so. I mean, the metal ones are just you know, a little bit firmer, but yeah, I mean, they, they you can get good results with the plastic pellet knife, so I would I would not let that stop you from doing this. Okay. Grab some lighter color. Just do a few random. So there's our underpainting. I'm going to let Mark take this and blow dry it for me. Our master blow dryer guy. While 
he's doing Ooh. that all. And uh, people want uh, maybe a pirate themed stick man for stick man. Oh, okay. So he needs an eye patch, obviously. <laughs> Or he doesn't have. Exactly. Let me get, it, get the right brush for that. This is Stickman. He's our mascot. Mark drew him. Obviously. <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. And uh, we add something to him every show. So we'll give him an eye patch for being Pirate Day. Talk like a Pirate Day, I should say. I'll get my patch there. I feel like he could use a parrot, but I don't have a picture of a parrot, so I'm not going to try to paint one right now. We'll also give him a little white flower over here on our fence post. Put a little white flower down here. At the bottom of our fence. Can't really see it very well. And blending in. We'll have to use some of that blue. Oh yeah, we'll use the teal. There we go. Now you can see it. All right. <laughs> He's even got the beard, so it works. It works really well. <laughs> Actually, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, this step was really important because when I did my example, I did not wait for it to dry, and then I ended up with a lot of soupy color that I did not want happening. So be sure you don't skip that step. Uh, you'll be glad you did it. Um, I was kind of regretting it and fighting the process the whole time because of it. Alright, so I'm going to grab some white. Oh, oh don't fall. And I, about equal parts here of this uh, um, gel medium. This one is gloss gel. They come in matte gel and satin or semi-gloss. Um, just the semi-gloss matte and, and gloss just means the sheen. Um, it's basically the same thing. Matte would be, you know, less shiny. And, of course, the... <laughs> it also dulls your color a little bit, so I don't use matte a whole lot. But matte actually works really well for, like, gluing stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just mix up a little bit more, even. Because I know I'm going to use all of this. Make sure I don't have any weird, funky things happening. I think I have some gummy stuff in my gel medium. Come on, come off there. Okay. So I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to think about how I was going to explain how to do this. Basically, it's kind of like spreading cake batter or cake frosting. So you kind of have to have enough on your knife uh, to spread around, right? And you're going to start where you want the it to be thickest. So usually by like right around the edges of the flower. And then I'm going to scrape towards the center, but not fill it in completely. So if I get too much, I can kind of scrape it back. I want a little bit of that color underneath showing through. So now I've got, you know, a little bit less on my brush or my palette knife. I'm going to let it skip on this way. And I, I smoosh it down like that. It'll kind of create a thicker area right there. And I can kind of smooth it out. I'm going to smooth out this a little bit. There we go. Okay, somebody wants to know, are you using a medium? I just mixed a little bit of the uh, gel medium, gloss gel and medium in with this. 
before I started. Translated, yes. Yes, but you don't have to. You can just go use straight. Uh, I just used it because it makes your paint go farther, so you don't use as much of your, heavy, you know, your expensive paints. So... I'm going to grab some of the unbleached titanium. And a little bit of that medium, if I can get some that doesn't have goo in it. It will it will basically double your paint. And the medium is not, it's clear, you know, so it won't tint your paints at all. And it's not nearly as expensive as paint is. You know, so a big bottle or a big thing like this is, what, $20, right? But you can usually get it on sale. But that's worth, you know, like 10 bottles of paint probably. I don't even know how many ounces is in that. Maybe not 10, probably. I think that's, uh, that might be 16 ounces. How many, how much is 273 milliliters in ounces, honey? Job. Ooh, it's there. So I'm swiping back through. 270? 270 ounces? No. Well, you, you told me 473 you. milliliters. Google says it is 16 ounces. 16 ounces. Okay, so that's uh, half, two ounces per bottle, so that's eight bottles. So it's, you know, it, it will, it's eight bottles worth of paint, which one, you know, one bottle of paint is easily, can be, you know, $15 for some colors. So you can see how, you know, buying a $20 thing of gel medium and using it this way can really be cost effective in making your especially if you're doing a lot of these palette type paintings I don't use it a lot um, to extend my paint but I, I probably should I just don't think to do it okay there we go so I mixed up a little bit of teal with my unbleached titanium as well so that I had a little bit of that color and a little bit of the gray I want to Clean this off, or actually, I'm just going to scrape it on over here. Try to get it all off. I can't get it off there. And I'm going to make some gray with the burnt umber and blue, dark blue. Make some more of that gray color. And Make some with white. You want it fairly close to white, so you don't want the value too dark. I mixed up that, you know, gray there. We'll use that in other places, but want some of the lighter color mostly for this okay there we go all right so i'm gonna ooh, pull through the, some of that too just a little bit and then we'll keep pulling this side down so that it's easier to reach. Kim would like to know, why would you paint the underpainting gray if it's going to be a light color? Um, because we wanted a little shadow underneath. It, it With white, especially, if you, if you don't put a darker color underneath, it just looks flat. So having that little bit of dark gray or, you know, even blue we could have used or, or brown or whatever... Um, is really good underneath white to give it some dim dimension. Diane wants to know why aren't your paints muddy like hers are? <laughs> 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 are you?
are you already? <laughs> is she painting along? Uh, I'm not sure. She may needs to. She may need to uh, let them dry <laughs> if they're starting to muddy. Trust me, I was I was fighting with them earlier today. I feel your pain because I was. I don't work with palette knife a whole lot, so you know it's just trying to kind of figure out what the best way of doing it. But I found I think that the having the undercoat first is probably the best. All right, so I'm going to grab some of this kind of orangey color, that orangey brown here that we had before, and mixing it with a little bit of the unbleached titanium. And I'm just going to tap it in. Actually, I might use a little bit of a brighter color. Did you have another question? Yes. Um, if they don't, if they can't use a palette knife or don't have one, mm -hmm. what other technique could give us the same effect? Um, it won't be the same exactly if you do it with a brush, but it'd be, you can get something fairly similar. And I would just, you know, kind of load it up fairly thickly and, uh, you know, set it there and just drag it towards the center, you know, and let some of that dark color show through. I, I really like that too, actually. So. little bit of this unbleached titanium and tap, tap it in the center of that flower. And trying to get it just on the tip. There we go. What are you laughing at? I switched to side cam as soon as you stopped. <laughs> <laughs> So kind of lay on the paint using the tip and then you can kind of scrape it back down towards the center to get some motion in that paint, some grooves in it. Might add a little bit of this teal color over here. Did you zoom in? Just a little bit, just so okay. they could get a better look at the textures and stuff. Okay. You need to let me know if I'm off. Because I had it just... Oh, is that in my job description? Yes. I don't, think, I don't think it was updated with that. <sighs> you got the sigh already, because I was off camera already. So you didn't tell me. Well, I'll just switch to side cam, because you're never off camera on side cam. Okay. <laughs> No, only when I think it might be helpful. Grabbing a little bit of both the unbleached and the white hair. These are going to kind of pull up, but they're they're going to have a petal that kind of is crossing over, facing straight at us. It's coming up over the center, so. It's not going to be a full sweep like these ones were. It's just going to be part of one that we're seeing. Kind of the side of it. There we go. Do 
Tina said that it's under the section that's called other duties as assigned. <laughs> I'm blocking Tina right now. <laughs> One sec. I'll be right back. <laughs> other duties as assigned. Yeah. There we go. So I left a little bit of that gray showing when I kind of added this, these colors did this one kind of the unbleached titanium and then the more the white on this one here and then I can put a couple buds or something over here almost out of that white. There we go. All right, I'm going to use some of this gray, this darker color here. Let's grab a little bit of the brown, really make it nice gray. Use that on this one a little bit. Shadow that side of it. I wasn't paying attention at the beginning. Uh -huh. What type of flower is this? I don't know. Okay, good. So I didn't have to. I think to it's a poppy. Confess. It looks like a poppy. <laughs> it's kind of made up. Either poppy or cosmos, maybe. Somebody probably could tell me. Let's use a little bit of the yellow with that. Yellow oxide, unbleached titanium, cadmium orange. We'll put it in over the top of the center. Is the blue and if you're having trouble with this, you can. I, I'm just kind of control where I'm loading it uh, by putting it on the tip of my brush sometimes and not loading it all the way to the back end all the time. What were you saying? Uh, I want to know, is the blue you're using close to Prussian blue? Yes, it's very close. Yes. Like, are they first cousins? There's Prussian. And there's... Oh, he's way down here. There's Anthroquinone. So they're, they're very close. This one's a little bit brighter than Prussian blue. Really both will work. And I included the link to the Prussian blue down in the description as well. So just in case. I've used both. I don't know. I, you know, it just depends on, it doesn't, I, it doesn't really make sense why I pick one over the other. Sometimes I just feel like it. So I can't tell you why. I wish I, didn't, I had a good reason for it, but I don't. <laughs> Just mixing up a little bit of the teal with the unbleached titanium and the white there. I'm going to do another little bit right here. Kind of adding some raised areas. Scraping it up on one side there so that I can kind of get it off on. canvas. Here we go. Look at the gray. Okay, 
we can start with the dark blue here and I'm just going to use it full strength I've really been kind of sticking to the smaller knife it gives me a little bit more control I feel like but you can use whatever knife you prefer and actually I might use this one this kind of more flat bladed one for some of these. Let's see if it gives us a better leaf. See, I'm kind of setting it down there and just kind of dragging that tip through it to create the leaf shape. is a little bit easier. There we go. Add some little pockets of darkness. You could use a brush for this if you want a little bit more control. It's up to you. Maybe paint around this to leave just the leaf shape of that one. is very um, just intuitive so it's gonna the more you play with it the more you know things will be kind of revealed and you can add more paint and mush them together or you can just do some random splotches here and there So we'll say that everybody can make the painting their own. Absolutely. So they can use the colors that they like and you know continue on or stop at any point they would like to. Yes. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I'm off camera and you gotta tell me. Well, why'd you move away over there? I don't I even I zoomed do. out. just looking directly at the palette not at the at the monitor I'm sorry <laughs> at the palette when you I'm s the at the monitor no at the canvas oh canvas canvas yes, thank you. board sorry yeah I don't know use you my art be. terms correctly I know I about had a heart attack when I saw you paint you spelled palette wrong on my Instagram account the other day. It's like what? Nobody can prove that that was me. <laughs> Man, people has, are gonna think I don't know how to it has your spell palette. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Blame it on me. Mm. Yeah. And I covered for your hand farts the other day too. <laughs> Some of that with teal. 
probably putting way too much of this color on, but I like it, so I'm just going to keep on going until you tell me to stop. I think I'm going to get a smaller brush, actually, and sort of fill in some of this in here. that stem so I'm going to put that back in. And we'll put in the back end of this flower here. I don't know how that happened that, that way. It got way close to that one. some yellow chamomile light now. And mix a little bit of this teal color in with it. Just kind of tone it down, make it a little bit more green. And I'm going to move it over here so I can pick up some of this white that's left over. Make it nice and chartreuse. looking up pirate jokes. I heard you laughing over there. Okay, so let's add some of this color down here. Just going to let me see where I want it. Maybe just a little touches of it here and there to give it a little extra color in some of these places off to the side. Some yellow oxide here. It's kind of mixing with all these other colors here.
<clears throat> I'm going to scoop it so that it kind of is along one side just by kind of scraping like this and then we'll try to get some lines in with this color. to the flower pods, darken their bottom area, maybe add a little bit of, on this side of the flower there. Now at this point we don't want to mess with these too much because they're starting to dry so they're getting tacky. Uh, acrylics will get sticky when they start to dry so if we do any more touch-ups on here we're gonna have to be really lightly touch it so we can kind of touch it but we don't want to press down too hard or scrape uh, any of it because it will scrape off the paint and it'll get kind of gummy and uh, sticky just not quite what we want so Touches. We add a little bit of bright green, mix that teal with the cadmium yellow light. And a couple of leaf type shapes. People are saying that this is gorgeous and oh, good. Maybe your best palette knife painting. Really? Oh, thank you. Except for the one poppy on that other painting. That's true. The one that Mark did was the best, probably, out of all. Yeah, adding a little bit of blue there, give it a little bit of a shadow down in the dip. I'm just add a little bit of that to this one too. Okay, there we go. So for those of you who are watching this in the future or not in chat, the humming noise you can hear is our neighbor mowing his yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, good timing. We need to talk about it. Talk yeah. about that with him, maybe. <laughs> we never had this problem when, when we had you taped down. When we what? Had you taped down. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I don't want to go back to that, though. No, thank you. Adding just a little bit of extra white to the tips of some of these to brighten them up. Some extra. Ooh, see, that's picking up. That's what it was doing to me when I was painting earlier. It was picking up the colors underneath, so I don't want that to happen. Stay where you are. Try that again. There we go. Okay. Yeah, a little bit darker 
shadow right in here. Maybe a little bit of darker shadow right there. blue color and mix that with my green get kind of a darker green we'll use that to create the stems on these little buds here snapping that against the trying to get <laughs> this paint to come off oh so you're pushing really hard on the yeah it was it was snapping the it's, I'm, I'm it's, going to side cam it's, so they can see you pushing down okay you need to move your other hand there you go see if you can paint with one hand tied behind your back exactly <laughs> <laughs> scrape through that wet paint create marks too I can do that over here This is where you kind of need to start being careful because it is getting dry. So you're going to start to lift, but it can catch just on some of these raised areas if you just barely scrape it on there. Ooh, super chat. We got a super chat from Craft Shack. Thank you. Says, thanks for the fun night. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by and watching with us. Makes it fun for us for sure. All right. Adding a little bit of extra white here. like I want more teal just a little bit I feel like I covered up all my teal I'm gonna grab some of that and just put in some bright teal in a couple places before we go Alright, 
right now I'm happier, I think. Just needed some of that teal in there again. Maybe not that much. All right, we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna wait to sign this because I can't really sign it. <laughs> At this point, it would be a mess. I guess I could sign it with my palette knife, maybe scrape it through here. Ooh. Let's try that. I might have to try to zoom in on that. Uh, I'm gonna use a pencil. Good luck. <laughs> I think I can do it right here because I just did it. So. Wow. Through that wet paint. That right was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I could always go back over that with the ink if I want to later if I need to make it darker. But all right, there we go. So we got a little abstract floral okay, for I'm you. I'm going to zoom in and center it up there so they can get a really good look at it. Yeah. No, the other, the other center. Over here? Yeah. I, I'm looking at this. Now I want to make this a little bit brighter on this one. Just on this side. There we go. Just so it sticks out a little bit more. All right. And for those who are coming in late, can you show them Stickman? <laughs> there, I'm being asked in chat. It wasn't me. <laughs> Got his pirate patch. Good pirate patch. Yep. Talk like a pirate day. <laughs> All right, take the palette there off and I'll show the. Uh, hold on. There we go. Ooh. Not too shabby. I Hope mean, you guys try this. Yeah, there's a lot of comments in chat how beautiful and awesome and yeah, cool I it really is. I really like it. I do too. I think it's pretty. I like the colors too. So, mm -hmm. all right. Hope you guys try this. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we will see you Saturday. We're going to have a cabin by a lake it'll be a collaboration with cinnamon cooney so be sure to watch for that and uh, we'll be at our normal time so cinnamon cooney mm -hmm. the art sherpa. the art sherpa yep cool yeah so we'll be doing that on saturday and uh, we'll be painting a little cabin by a lake with some water reflections uh kind of a i think we're going to do a fallish colors on our trees so should be good so hopefully you'll join us for that on saturday and we'll see you then